Hi friends, uh, this video is a short conceptual video about a comparison uh, of comparison between the, uh, the movement of substances across a cell. Mind you, I am not talking about the substances moving across the cell membrane which we have discussed in a previous video. Um, for instance, the substances moved by uh, endocytosis or substances enter the cell by diffusion or active transport. So, we have seen how the substances move through a membrane or across a membrane. They cross the membrane. In this video, we are going to see how the substances cross a cell. They cross an entire cell. Uh, now, basically, it would be called as transcytosis. Uh, transcytosis, when the substances move across an entire cell, they would enter uh, or uh, a particular substance would enter the cell from one side. I mean, it will uh, enter the cell from one side of the cell crossing one membrane and then leave the cell on the opposite side, uh, the membrane which is on the opposite side of that cell. So, substance will leave the cell and in this manner, uh, the substance has crossed the entire cell. So, uh, that would be called as uh, transcytosis, let us say glucose entering the cell from one side and leaving the cell from the other side of the cell. So, commonly called as the uh, transcytosis. Now, so far as the glucose is concerned, uh, we will take the example of glucose to understand uh, this particular concept. Glucose enters all the uh, cells of the body by facilitated diffusion. So, glucose from the blood, glucose from the plasma would enter the cell from one side and then it will stay inside the cell because the cell is going to utilize this glucose for the sake of ATP production. But then, in the case of GIT and kidney, glucose will have to cross two membranes because in these two cases, GIT and kidney, glucose is going to be absorbed into the bloodstream, into the circulation. So, for all the other cells of the body, glucose just has to cross one membrane and enter the cell and it will be metabolized. In the case of GIT and kidney, uh, glucose movement would be transcytosis in the sense that the glucose movement is occurring for the sake of uh, absorption into the blood. So, let us say GIT. Here is a glucose uh, in the uh, lumen of the gut. Now, this is going to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And uh, these are the epithelial cells lining the gut. You know, epithelial cells lining the gut uh, or in the renal tubules or endothelial cells lining the blood vessels, they are said to be the polar cells. Uh, they have two different environments which their cells are facing. I mean, this cell lining the gut or an endothelial cell lining the blood vessel. They are said to be the polar cells because one side of the cell is facing one type of environment, the lumen of the gut, lumen of the GIT and the other side of the cell which is uh, facing the blood vessel or interstitium, it is facing the interstitial fluid and then the blood vessel. 
is a different type of environment and these cells they separate two different types of environments these epithelial cells or endothelial cells they have been referred to as the polar cells uh, now what happens is glucose is going to be absorbed into the blood so it is going to cross uh, two membranes of this uh, this particular cell or these cells the epithelial cells of the gut so it will enter the cell from one side and it will leave the cell and eventually enter the blood uh, from the other side of the cell uh, the the basement uh, membrane is crossed and then the glucose will enter the blood vessel so uh, apical membrane and basolateral membrane these two membranes are there for this particular cell which is lining the blood uh, which is lining the git how this movement occurs see glucose is crossing the entire cell it is going to enter the cell from one side and leave the cell and enter the blood vessel from the other side so now in this case uh, glucose movement is occurring from low concentration to high concentration while it enters the cell and therefore this is uh, an active transport to be precise secondary active transport and the carrier is sglt sodium glucose transporter so sodium glucose transporter is a secondary active symporter it's a symport glucose will enter the cell and then it has to leave the cell from other side from the other side that movement occurs as high to low uh, so it's going to be facilitated diffusion and the transporter is glut to be precise glut 2 uh, which is used by the glucose Uh, to leave this cell and enter the blood vessel so glucose movement has occurred from lumen into the epithelial cell and then uh, that was low to high and then high to low uh, it went into the blood vessels glucose has crossed that entire cell that's the transcytosis um because it is going across that cell now this cell is uh, going to require some amount of glucose and therefore this glucose is uh, virtually in a free form so some of the glucose will also be utilized by the cell like any other cell even this epithelial cell will need some uh, atps to be generated and therefore it will need some amount of glucose so that glucose is uh, virtually free there in the cytoplasm and it's going to cross the cell go to the other side but some of it may also be utilized by the cell for its own energy production this particular cell so this is one example of transcytosis where a substance is not enveloped it's not uh, in an enclosed form it's in the free form some of it may be utilized by the cell uh now that was one uh, example now look let's look at the other example which i need to explain uh for the transcytosis it has been described as cytopempsis this type of transcytosis would be called as cytopempsis what happens in this is that the cell let's say in this case uh, we are talking about the endothelial lining of the blood vessel and here is a fat cell just a diagrammatic representation uh now a substance has to uh, which is there in the blood vessel which it's there in the circulation it has to cross the cell and uh, then enter the fat cell this substance should not be utilized by the lining cell this is also a transcytosis uh, specially referred to as cytopempsis 
this substance should not be handled by the lining cell. So how this transcytosis would occur? The cytopempsis will involve endocytosis on one side of the cell and exocytosis on the other side. So by endocytosis, the substance will enter the cell and by exocytosis, it will leave the cell and enter its destination. This is a blood vessel. This is a fat cell. So I have taken another example to explain the uh, transcytosis. Cytopempsis, therefore, we may say is a combination of endocytosis by which the substance will enter the cell and exocytosis by which the substance will leave the cell. Uh, as you all are aware, when there is endocytosis, the substance is uh, inside a vesicle. This is a vesicular transport. The endocytosis and exocytosis are called as vesicular transports. Uh, so let's draw a bigger diagram to understand this. Suppose this is a endothelial cell, the, uh, the cell which is lining the blood vessel and the substance is to be absorbed or substance has to move from the cell. Uh, it has to move across the cell to enter its destination on the other side. What will happen is this substance will be endocytose. As you are aware, uh, there will be a vesicle formation. First, uh, there will be a small dip in the membrane. A pit will be formed in the membrane. That Then that pit will invaginate further, further. And finally, the substance will be internalized. This is the insulin. Uh, it, it went inside the pit. Finally, fine, uh, a vesicle was formed and the substance has been internalized and then this vesicle will by exocytosis will release the insulin on the other side of the cell and it will uh, act on the fat cell. You know insulin uh, causes uh, glucose entry into the fat cell and muscle cell for which it has to act on those cells. Now this is also a transcytosis. We took one example of movement across the cell. And this is another example of movement across the cell. What is the basic difference between the two? The basic difference is in this particular instance, the substance was not going to be handled by the lining cell at all. So, the substance is inside a vesicle. In a vesicular format, in a vesicular transport manner, it crossed the cell and was released on the other side uh, of that cell. So that is a basic difference. What type of substances uh, cross the cells in this manner? I mentioned one example, insulin, also transferrin, immunoglobulins, they are transported in this manner by the way of cytopempsis, that is they are endocytosed from one side and exocytosed from the other side. So that is uh, a comparative feature of transcytosis occurring in two different ways. One, I gave you the example of glucose absorption from the GIT or uh, from the renal tubules, whereby some amount of that substance may also be utilized by the cell for its energy production. Whereas in the other instance, that substance is enveloped uh, while it is crossing the cell. So that this cell will not be able to, uh, wouldn't have to make use of that substance. It's just crossing the cell. And the cell itself has uh, not, uh, is not going to use that substance as such. So uh, it's inside a vesicle. It has been enveloped. Therefore, this is called as cytopempsis, a combination of endocytosis and exocytosis, whereas 
The other type of transcytosis is a combination of uh, secondary active transport and facilitated diffusion. So, a small uh, conceptual comparison between two types of transcytosis movement across a cell.